Uh, 32. There, 30, there 32. are 32 plus really good candidates for unconstitutional actions. Okay, 32 candidates of, of you really believe, actual unconstitutional actions by the President of the United States. There are a handful of these that I think reasonable people could say are just egregious executive branch overreach, but not fully unconstitutional. The vast majority of these are just an attack on the Constitution. Okay, can you go, why don't you sure. go over and show that to me? And so these... You started, and they have been narrowed down now by voters online. That's right. Folks, okay. go to constitutionalmadness.com, and we've gone from the opening 32 to we're now at the Sweet 16. Mm -hmm. okay. And so I guess we're going to talk through some of who advanced in the opening round and look at the matchups for this coming weekend okay. as we go from the 16 to the Elite Eight. All right, so go ahead. So in the South region, uh, there was a competition between the Department of Justice suing Arizona over whether or not they can pass their own laws uh, versus waivers to exempt uh, different states from uh, and no child left behind, where the administration just passes big laws and then they decide who to carve out based on special interests and that favors. On, they do that on almost everything, though. They do. And in fact, I think that's probably why it didn't win in the opening round, because it was such a common thing. So the DOJ lawsuit against Arizona advanced. Uh, then there's the failure to enforce federal drug laws, uh, competing against uh, executive branch privilege assertions over the Fast and Furious investigation. If I am the people, I would say Fast and Furious. You, uh, in fact, we should have you predict some of yeah. how the people voted. That's All a right. good one. Um, then there's the FEC, uh, I'm sorry, FCC power grab over the Internet and the Equal Opportunity Employment Commission trying to regulate who churches and religious institutions can hire and must keep and promote. Uh, I think that one's bigger, but I think the power grab of the Internet. No, it's, we're in the South region here, and religious liberty is still strong. So uh, the, the EEOC, uh, uh, right. Church's Rights, okay, advances good. there. And then we had a, a competition between the bailout of the auto industry, which mm -hmm. actually was a part of the financial bailout, mm -hmm. and I don't know how a car company is a part of the finance industry, which mm -hmm. is what the legislation defined, versus, in my home state, the government trying to regulate children working on family that. farms. The, the farm chores. No, the bailouts are still big. you got to be kidding we're, me. We're six years into the bailouts, but... Uh, Populist America is still wow. concerned about the this farm kind of power grad. Really disturb me. Yeah, really disturb me. Um, this one was a matchup of two uh, perennial heavyweights: the congressional carve out to give uh, subsidies for Obamacare uh, to congressional staff mm -hmm. and members that doesn't apply to regular folks, uh, versus. Uh, the violation of conscience rights as the government forces us to fund abortion. We're 41 Please years. Please tell me it's conscience rights. Uh, conscience rights do advance, yeah. So we're 41 years into okay. the Roe versus Wade, but only in January of this last year did the government get into the active funding of abortion. Um, then you got here two different delays of Obamacare, the individual mandate delay versus the IPAB, the Independent Payment Advisory Board, that's going to be a huge part of how the government, 15 unelected bureaucrats, a certain more power over payment. That is, uh, is that the death panel one? It's sometimes called the death panel. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, I would say that more people care about the delay of the mandate. You got it. Yeah. Although the death panel is going to reach into all of us. Yeah. Um, then there's the uh, specific carve outs for uh, making your health plans compliant versus the delay in the employer mandate. Folks have felt the deploy on the employer mandate two different times. Yeah, I would say the employer mandate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, these are never before in American history. If, I mean, even FDR, Woodrow Wilson. I mean, I've studied those two. This is breathtaking. Yeah. Breathtaking. And nobody in Congress seems to care. It, it, you know, what I find on the ground in Nebraska, I'm a 42-year-old non-politician. I've never done this before. We're having these town halls, and we're getting huge crowds turning out, and that's exactly what they're saying. People worry that we're losing the country, and they don't understand what Washington's doing. What is, the house is on fire. Why don't we admit the house is on fire? They've rewritten Obamacare. Now, there are 22,000 pages of implementing regs in Obamacare. Thirteen times they've promulgated rules and regs that directly contradict the written law. And the reason, this thing, the reason we're doing this, obviously it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but the reason we're doing it is because it arose organically at one of our town halls. People just say, I'm sick of politics, I'm sick of politicians, but what we're talking about here at this town hall is the precious inheritance that is the Constitution. You know, people, people used to say, oh, people are talking about the, you know, the loss of rights. What right? Th these, these, these are all guaranteed by the Constitution. These 32. Yeah. I mean, okay. you opened your segment with the Second Amendment point about uh, if you register them, then that's yeah. supposedly what the Second Amendment meant and in the 1780s. Are, I, the, I, 
I am so concerned that, that, that schools could just write whatever the hell they want and nobody cares unless the press gets involved, which is a rarity. Right. Nobody seems to care. And, and, you know, what you have in so many of these is either an attack on the First Amendment, speech, press, religion, yeah. uh, or association, right. or the separation of the branches. Okay. Um, uh, implementing DREAM Act. Implementing or? DREAM Act, though they didn't get the legislation. They wanted the DREAM Act. They couldn't pass it through Congress, so they tried to implement it in the executive branch. Uh, that advances over changing welfare work rules. Yeah. But that's a tragedy as well. Yeah. The 1996 welfare reform worked. We got more than 50% of the caseloads reduced because we helped move people from dependency we're, we're, to independent living. We're so screwed. Okay, so I think this is, I think the next one over here in the north, I think this is the, the winner myself. When it all comes down to it, I think this is going to be the winner. The, the north was a stacked region, there's no doubt. Uh, I mean, it, the opening round matchup here is between the IRS targeting of Tea Party groups and the, the executive branch monitoring AP and Fox News. Why, both of those are huge, but right, IRS the, yeah. freedom of speech. The IRS yeah. targeting advances. Uh, you know what, honestly, I mean, I'm a guy in the newsroom. Monitoring AP and Fox, good. Where the hell were you? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, you know, it, oh, gee, maybe, oh, you're concerned about that? Boo-hoo, cry me a river. We're, we have to stand up for our rights because they haven't, they haven't stood up for ours. Um, then there's a decision to not uh, defend DOMA. The Defense of Marriage yeah. Act is federal law. The, you know, my kids are 2, 12, and 10. My 2-year-old doesn't pay a lot of attention to the Constitution. But my 12- and 10-year-old daughters, they know that the executive branch is supposed to implement what the Congress passes. Right. The Defense of Marriage Act is still a law. The administration just decides not to defend it. But that lost out uh, to the National Labor Relations Board recess appointments when the Senate wasn't actually wow, in I'm recess. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Uh, the EPA decision to regulate uh, carbon dioxide without any congressional authority versus the barricading of the World War II memorial. I think regulating is, is bigger, but I bet barricading World War II memorial. No, nope, the regulating one, oh, and this is one from your opening point. Um, you know, this is just, this is just dumb uh, to shut yeah. down the World War II memorial, but it's arguably there's not a constitutional hook, the right. regulation yeah, hook okay, without good. any law. Um, preventing layoff notices to federal contractors during sequestration so they could manage politics, just giving gag orders uh, to federal contractors versus the closing of Yucca Mountain nuclear storage site in violation of the law. Uh, I would say preventing um, the layoff notices. Yeah, I think these gag orders, people rightly know, if speech goes, you got really big problems. Yeah. Uh, then moving down to the West region, um, there was uh, a choice the oh, voters man. were given between a six-month moratorium on deep water drilling in the Holy Gulf cow. or uh, a war in Libya without congressional the authorization. The war in Libya. Yeah. But the six-month moratorium in the Gulf, I forgot about that. That's, that's, that was nuts. Yeah. The things we've seen in the last six years, I never thought I would see them in America. It desensitizes you, but as depressed as you are about Washington, i got to say, you got to be optimistic what you find on the ground in Nebraska. These people, they want to pass along a constitution to their kids. Can I ask you a question? Do, where were you, you know, 2002? Were you, I was, I was, you know, kind of like, I vote for the Republicans, and I didn't think that there was a problem, and I thought everybody was basically the same, you know, Nancy Pelosi, while I disagree with her, she doesn't hate the Constitution. I don't believe any of that stuff anymore. Where were you? Well, I'd say 2002, you know, we're only a year after 9-11 at that point, and yeah. the first duty of the federal government is to defend us from enemies foreign and domestic, and I'm real happy that George W. Bush went out and fought hard, knowing at a time right. when we could be hit again and again. So I, I did believe there was a big and deep when difference was your in turn? 2002. When was your turn? Did you have one? You know, I'd say um, it's more of an evolution than a revolution at being shocked about this egregious, right. these egregious steps. I understand how President Obama could get elected in 2008. I don't understand what our people were doing in 2012 when we reelected a guy who so clearly doesn't have the deep regard for the Constitution that his oath requires. Yeah, because I was, I was disgusted by George W. Bush by the end. I was like, I, I don't want any of this. I don't want that. But I also don't want that. I mean, there was just no choice. Uh, but now that he said, you know, he said in his first campaign, I am a constitutional scholar. I know the Constitution and what George Bush is doing with executive orders is wrong. Look at this. Look at this. And the next one on the list is one of the I mean, this is amazing. Yeah. Having a White House kill list that includes Americans and there being no due process 
I mean, that easily trumps oh, yeah. uh, the president's decision to try to raise the minimum wage yeah, for federal list. contractors. Yeah. Kill list pretty much beats almost anything. Yeah, the, the kill list is a real contender to come out of the West region, yeah. I think. Um, and then collecting bulk data from American cell phones versus warrantless searches of Americans' international phone calls. Uh, collecting data from cell phones. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, the NSA has shifted their story on whether they were collecting the data. Wow. And I, I think one of the things we constitutionalists need to fight for is many times people scream that there's too much partisanship in Washington, and they're partly right. But the bigger problem is we elect people in both parties that don't take seriously communicating a conservative governing agenda that's constitutional, but we still believe in three separate but equal branches of government. So I hope that Dianne Feinstein really does wake I, up you know and what? defend the constitutional problem. On, the, on, the, um, on radio, I said the same thing. Diane, tell me what we can do to support you. I don't agree with her on almost anything. I agree. But I agree with her on that. And, you know, people, Lindsey Graham doesn't. Lindsey Graham will come out and say, well, you know, I don't mind because I'm not doing anything wrong. So I don't mind if they spy on me. Excuse me? That's, that's, that is the road to, to, to sure. fascism. Yeah. And, and, and the next guy will do it, even if he's a Republican, if he's a Lindsey Graham style, they're not going to give up this power. They'll just keep going down this road. I think that's so right. That's what you hear in our town halls, too, is the people, we're a very conservative state in Nebraska. My friends and neighbors and family members, they're solidly conservative people, but they get that we don't have a crisis just because Democrats are in power. We have a crisis because Republicans want to be in power, and once they're there, they'll want to use these imperialistic, expanded state powers in the executive branch as well. My my grandmother, on my grandmother's side, my grandmother was born in Nebraska, and I know who my grandmother was, so I... Seems like you came from good <laughs> Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, last... Then the last opening round game was uh, issuing national security letters to violate free speech or proposing a national license plate tracking system. Jeez, what is the national security letters? What was that one? That's complicated. It's a, it's a complicated provision of the Patriot Act, but there are essentially gag orders that don't allow people to communicate. Oh. Oh, um, I attorney. think that one is, I mean, they're both horrible, but I think that one's bigger. But yeah. it, did that one win that? It did. Wow, this, so this smart people taking this. So this gets us to, and, and folks who, your listeners who want to play along, they can go to constitutionalmadness.com. Every, every game, unfortunately, is an upset because the Constitution is losing as the bracket advances. Um, but it gives people a real way to get their hands around. We have articles underneath all 32 so of these. Here. They can read the history. So come here. Um, so <clears throat> tell me. Um, when is your primary? Uh, seven weeks from tomorrow. Um, let's say you win. First of all, um, a little rapid fire here. Who's your favorite founder? Oh, that's tough. No, it's I'm, not I, fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to go shout with Madison. Madison? Why? I think we need to do a better job of recovering a moment where people understand the drafting of the constitutional process in those debates. Um, uh, worst president? Yeah. Besides, though, not this one. Not this one. Yeah, I mean, this one's trying to beat out Jimmy Carter. Uh, there, there are other candidates historically. But, I, I mean, we want, to res we want to teach our kids to respect the office, right? And so I'm, I'm, uh, I cringe a little bit at the game because I want, I want us to have you none that are vote. this bad. <laughs> you lost my vote. <laughs> you're Everyone not, knows. You're not eligible Woodrow in Wilson. Nebraska. Woodrow Wilson. Um, um, all right, it we, is the founder time. of the dependency state. He is, he is the man who brought us where we're at today. And um, unfortunately, this president is finishing the job. But best of luck hey, to you. Good to be with Thank you. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having me. God bless. Back in a minute.